Okay. So hello everyone. Uh, I'm happy to be with you, and I'm very happy that Joachim Engel, my colleague and friend, has accepted to um, tell us about COVID and curves and exponential growth and factors. Joachim Engel is both a mathematician and a math educator. He specializes in non-parametric curve estimation and signal detection, applying methods of harmonic analysis and kernel regression to biomedical growth curves and economics. Today, he's also known for his fundamental contributions in statistics education, investigating students' comprehension of randomness and variability. <laughs> he has promoted the introduction of computer-intensive methods based, for instance, on bootstrap procedures. His experience on didactical methods for explaining functions and their uses for modeling real-world problems is reflected in his widely used, highly successful textbook on applying functions for modeling based on data. Since September 2019, he is the president of the International Association for Statistical Education. So I'm very pleased and very honored that he has accepted to tell us something about COVID and the math of COVID. Joachim, how are you? Okay, thank you. Fine. And thank you for this nice introduction. Thank you. Okay, Joachim, you know, uh, people are talking and people are always looking at TV presentations on problems on COVID. And the first thing I would like to ask you is there is definitely a progress if we compare, you know, what the world did about pandemics in the you know in the century of the pest and uh you know those times uh, there is there has been enormous progress and this progress is partially due also to mathematics what is your opinion sure okay i mean <laughs> uh, it, it always can be worse than the current situation. And of course, the Black Death with uh, eradicating about one third of the European population um, was a, a huge human tragedy. Um, and and um, COVID is, is, cannot be compared with the Black Death in that sense. Um, and, and of course, as you mentioned, I mean, one important difference is that um, the, the medicine and our understanding of the spread of diseases today is completely different to the 14th century. Um, but on the other hand, I mean, um, nowadays, I mean, um, there are some um, determinants that maybe even a bit more difficult than in the former days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the, popula the world population is much higher than in medieval times, and, um, and, and people are used to mobility, our economy, yes. our, our behavior, in, um, and our global relations that we entertain um are a beautiful thing but they favor the spread of a disease thank you so um, you know the interesting thing uh in the mathematical treatment of the epidemiological uh, epidemiological development is of course based on parameters and for instance there is a reproduction rate r etc could you tell us a bit about these parameters and about the mathematical modeling of the phenomena involved in COVID? To, to contain uh, the epidemics and to get the figures down, the reproduction rate R is the most important parameter. Yeah? Yes. Um, I mean, it's simply defined. It, it, it expresses um, let's say if R equals three, then that means on average, every infected person infects three other people. Mm -hmm. Of That's course, easy. We, we also hear a lot about the seven day um, incidence rate these days, and that's highly debated in, in Germany in particular these days in connection to 
to to re, um, to ending the lockdown and um, and opening business, um, and this uh, parameter is important for health departments to get control over the epidemics, mm -hmm. to get the numbers down. I mean, uh, but to get the numbers down, the reproduction rate is more important. Yeah, even more important. Um, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So my question is, okay, we have understood the definition of R. In average, one person, if the R is two, then one person on average will infect two others. If she's infected, she will infect two others on one day or what period? Okay. <laughs> That's a question a virologist may be able to answer. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it means in, in total. One in total, okay, but we don't know, or I, I, I have no um, uh, valid information um, for, for, for which period we have to assume here. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, it depends for three, four days, or if it extends to ten days. But R just means the blank number of people. Um, uh, that are being infected by a single person mm -hmm. with, the, with the coronavirus. Okay, so R being defined, we have an exponential growth based on R. Okay. Could you elaborate on this exponential yeah. growth? Um, I think that the basic understanding is relatively easy. Mm -hmm. Let, let's assume R to be three. That means, and we have one person that's carrying the, the virus, then he, this person will infect three others. In turn, each of these three others will in, infect three further additional people. So in the next time period, we have nine newly infected people. And that goes on. These nine people go out and infect get each of them three others, and we are already at the number of 27. Um, and so um, the intriguing thing about exponential growth is that um, th this story that I just told you, that is, most people are capable of understanding that. But still, we, it, uh, we, we tend to underrate the power of this exponential mm -hmm. growth. Um, the uh, Robert Bartlett was an American, US American physicist, and he has been quoted uh, by saying the greatest shortcoming of the human race is our inability to understand the exponential function. Mm -hmm. Exponential growth occurs whenever. Um, we uh, we have a situation where the rate of change, where the speed of growth is proportional to the current size of the population. Mm -hmm. yeah. why, why does China have more babies than Liechtenstein? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, I mean, the, the rate of population growth in China is much larger because they have 1.3 billion people. Um, and in small countries face the, um, the, the, the growth much smaller. I brought you two illustrations mm -hmm. uh, that, that uh, show you the power of exponential growth and the, the amazing power. And even people who understand just what I said theoretically are oftentimes deeply impressed by the following illustration. Mm -hmm. And um, I have to share my screen to get there. <clears throat> Let's look at this here. Yeah? Um, okay. Think about a single sheet of paper. In a four letter size, if you live in the United States, how thick it is. Let's say 0.1 millimeter, mm -hmm. very thin. Now I start folding it in half. Yeah? Okay, what do we get? Well, the thickness doubled 
0.2 millimeter. Not a big deal, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, I fold it again. 0.4 millimeter. Okay. Hard to discern, difficult to measure with, with a ruler or, or with the common, common uh, measures we have, yeah? But after five folds, it's already 3.2 millimeter thick. Mm -hmm. And now I'd like on a Gedanken experiment. I continue folding the piece of paper um, and by and cutting it. I mean, it size in, in half by, by folding it. Yeah. Okay. And sure, practically, it, it may not. It may very soon come to an, to an end. But we can imagine what happens if we fold it six times, seven times, eight times. If we, what happens if we go on? After 10 folds, the paper has a width, a thickness of 10, 10 centimeters. Oh, that's a misprint, not meters, 10 centimeters, about the width of a hand. After 14 folds, mm -hmm. Just having folded the piece of paper 14 times, mm -hmm. it already has the height of a short, of a short guy, a short human being. Mm -hmm. If we go on and fold it 25 times, mm -hmm. we are at a height of 3.4 kilometers. Mm -hmm. That's about the height of the Matterhorn. Mm -hmm. If we go on, 30 times. I mean, you think of oh, 30 times, two times. It's not very much. Okay, we already have a distance of 429 kilometers. It extends all the way from the Earth to the International Space Station. And if I do it a few more times, and you might have guessed, yeah, from the headline up there, how to get to the moon with a piece of paper. With 42 times folding this piece of paper, the paper has a thickness that is um, uh, more than the distance between the Earth and the moon. And if you fold it, then once more, you even come back to the moon. We don't want to stay. We also want to come back. Just 42 times folding a piece of paper that shows you the incredible, the, the, it's, it's very difficult to imagine how fast exponential growth goes. Mm -hmm. And if you think coming back to the coronavirus, um, um, and the reproduction rate, if we assume a reproduction rate of two, that's just what I demonstrated you here, yeah? Yeah. doubling in, um, in, in just a few time periods. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you. I have a second example mm -hmm. um, uh, in, a, in a different context and it goes a bit yeah, and maybe if if uh -huh. money is more appealing to you, mm -hmm. I can tell you mm -hmm. how you you can become a millionaire in a short time. Take one cent to your bank account today. You deposit it today, yeah, and you double the value on your bank account every day. This is what happens. You see a table mm -hmm. after five days. Okay, you, you have 32 cents in your account. Not a big deal, yeah? I mean, what can you get for 32 cents? Yeah. Well, after 10 days, you have 10 euros. Okay. It's enough for a cheap meal, yeah, at a, at a restaurant. After 20 days, you have 10,000 euros. And after 72 days, you have more than a million. So before the end of a month, 
you will have you you will be a millionaire That's yes great the power of exponential growth and um most people fail to gr grasp with their intuition what exponential growth means thank you thank you for this beautiful modeling and yes it gives us a clear impression of what it means now tell us why for instance in germany the lockdowns depend a lot on the incidence numbers so 50 per 100,000 or 35 per 100,000 and as you have heard at the moment some people are considering the mutations coming from england south africa etc and some have even said let's go down to 10 per 100,000 and everybody's confused and some people say okay keep the lockdown and others say no we have to open up the stores etc and there is a lot of tension of political tension and political discussion so what is your opinion you see we had a certain curve at the beginning and then we started having the mutations which of course imply an exponential growth again so how do we balance now what are the mathematical advice that you can give us to <clears throat> accept for instance this 35 for 100,000 okay i mean what you are asking is going beyond the mathematical model and as we know i mean there are many things involved in um in the politics of the pandemic no listen i'm not just asking the politics so I'm, I'm really asking also the mathematical model. Does it mean, so what is the relation of, of the three, 35 for 100,000 and this exponential curve? Okay. I mean, um, I could say, first of all, that there is no relation at all. Mm -hmm. but there is a relation with a change in the incidence rate. Yeah. If we want to to reduce the incidence rate, let's say from 80 per 100,000 people to 40, then um, in, in a certain time period, then we, we need a certain value for the reproduction rate. If the reproduction rate stays above one, then we will never get the incidence rate down. Um, a, a reproduction rate yeah, ha has to be smaller than one in order for the incidence rate to get down. Yeah? But let's say, sure, uh, if the incidence rate is one, if, if then we no, if the if the reproduction rate is one, then the incidence rate would stay constant. Yes, all the time. Yes, and this would make it difficult. I mean, a, a high um, incidence rate makes it very difficult for the health authorities to track down people who are infected and to make them go to quarantine. Yeah? Um, and um, so, it, it, which is a very important measure to lower the reproduction rate. Yes. This is a connection, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's more a, a practical um, um, measure, matter of, of political feasibility, or okay, in, yeah. in, in not a theoretical. Yes, uh, you have heard. You have heard now that the new rule these days, now today, is that two households can meet, but only five people of, out of two households, which sounds, you know complicated to household your household has at least four people my household two people how does one control those five people out of two households how would you explain that measure okay i mean um these are all measures that try to contain to constrain the spread of the virus yes and um and um the initial 
reproduction rate had been estimated as being 3.0. Mm -hmm. And the initial means, if there are no measures undertaken, if people can move around as freely as they want, yeah, or as they have been used to, and they party and they, they behave just as ever before. Mm -hmm. uh, um, this is called the R naught. And um, of course, I mean, and, and by the way, that's another difficulty. I mean, uh, the reproduction rate is a theoretical construct. And a, a problem is how do you get a valid measure for that? How can you get data that give you a reliable value for R? Mm -hmm. But um, the literature says um, the R naught, that is the, the reproduction rate, if no measures, no co constraining activities are being undertaken, then it, it, it is three. And what the government with their rulings try to impose is to, and by restricting contacts, um, is, uh, is, is nothing but trying to lower the, to, to, to lower that R value. Yes. Now, please let us introduce vaccination. So we have the mutations, we have the curves, and now we have vaccination. So how does, does this parameter enter the mathematical modeling? Okay, I mean, let's say in, in, in a simplified way, we could imagine vaccinated people just as people um, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah that, that are not there or that are not susceptible. Mm -hmm. They are not susceptible for the virus. Yeah. yeah. So um, let's say if we have a rule that says you are allowed to meet five people in a society with no vaccination, mm -hmm. that could be considered be being equivalent to a society where it's allowed to meet 10 people if half of the population is it's vaccinated. So uh, the hope, the big hope, um, and I think a well-founded expectation is one way to get the virus under control is to, to speed up with the vaccinations. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, another thing is, of course, to be able to test oneself all the time. So in Tübingen, for instance, the city where close to which I live, uh, there is going to be, there is already, and there is going to be even more, self-testing will be available. So there will be parks where you can get your little thing to test yourself. And that is also a factor that will improve the numbers because you will test yourself and if you're positive you stay home and if you're not positive you'll be out and you will be wearing your mask so you know ideally ideally if things continue with the vaccination on the one hand and the self-test and uh, connecting you know uh, via whatsapp inform informing others that you are tested positive for instance this should improve things very quickly you know we should be expecting in three months to be ready, to be done mm -hmm. with the virus. Do you, what are your expectations? Well, I mean, <laughs> what you say works under the assumption that people comply to it. Yes. That people, I mean, that these quick self-tests are really available. Yes. Maybe are freely available. Yes. The people use them. Yes. The people it really follow up on them. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and vaccination. So you know there is a huge discussion sure. on vaccination in Europe because the English did it very quickly, the Israelis did it quickly, but Europe, you know, was marred with bureaucracy and uh, formalisms, and so it is. It has been very slow, and again. Lots of protests. Yeah. As of today, um, around 5% of the population in Germany is vaccinated. Yeah. 
And that's still a, a small number. Yeah. Yes. I mean, if you consider the, the whole population, yeah? Yes. Uh, yes. Um, and mean, there is yeah. Yeah, one thing it is the uh, the epistemological and the mathematical model, yeah, about which <laughs> I feel confident to speak about. Mm -hmm. And the much more difficult issue is how to administer the politics around that. Yes. Because I mean there are many valid interests in, involved in in, in 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 all these issues and um, and but important is that people have a clear understanding of the dynamics and therefore i'm glad to be able to speak here about exponential growth people even people who have a a, a theoretical understanding underestimate intuitively the power of exponential growth yes and, and many people don't understand exponential growth. And they say, well, what is all that fuss about? Yeah, there are more people dying in car accidents yes. than, in, than with, with the virus. Yes, this is one, uh, by the way, this car accident comparison was done, you know, but economists of the world, important guys, I don't want to name them, but there was this thing, you know, it's just like car accidents, but they neglected the fact that car accidents that would be in one day, but the next day they would have twice as many. And so therefore it was quite a different thing, car accidents and the COVID mm -hmm. spreading. So that was a big mistake. And I thank you very much because uh, this has been useful, not just for me, it will be useful for my friends as well and thank you for taking the time to tell us something about COVID. and it will i will tell you about the comments that may appear when we spread this interview and you might be have the time to answer questions okay thank you very much laura it's my pleasure and um and i thank you for the opportunity to tell people about exponential growth yeah bye bye, bye.